this is going to bring us all the way through 2.2.8 in the manual. What we're going to be doing is taking the lower panel and attaching it to the back panel itself. But since we have the uh, lower panel out, let's go ahead and talk about some of the features and the, the parts that are on this lower panel just to be aware of. Especially in the assembly process, there are some things that can be damaged. We just want to make sure uh, that we're aware of them. We're going to talk about them a little bit later. So right here we have our 12 volt 29 amp AC power supply, AC to DC. So this is our receptacle for our AC main power on in. So we just want to be aware that these cables are here, make sure that they don't get damaged uh, or, or uh, disconnected. And this is our 12 volt out that's going to be plugging into our control panel. Right over here is our Z axis stepper motor and it's a uh, bipolar motor. So there are four wires coming off of this, uh, two individual phases. So when we assemble and slide this on up into this, there's uh, three points that we need to make uh, contact. <coughs> If I slide this up right here, these two little inserts line up with our lower rods. Right here, this shaft needs to be inserted into this collar. So as we slide it up, we need to make sure that these are flexed and aligned just right with this and this in the assembly process. Then along the back side here is where we're going to be attaching the hardware to bolt this panel to this panel. At that point, uh, we'll be able to pick it up, but since it's still pretty brittle in this motion and it hasn't been attached, we're gonna still do it while it's on its side, making it an L shape. So let's go ahead and start with the process. All I'm gonna do is go ahead and slide this panel on over, making sure that this isn't getting pinched and these wires are clear. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the panel in approximate position, line up this rod, line up the motor shaft into the collar, there it is it is pushed on in just like that all right so let's move on to the hardware from uh, bag G or box G that we we're talking about before so we've got some 157s which are these bigger machine fine thread screws that we used right over here the same screws that were on the top of the rods they actually go right here onto the bottom of the rod and the instructions it gives you a real clear indicator where they go so they're gonna just thread in right over here along the back panel we've got a bunch of 153s that come right over here the coarse threads and tighten it up but there is a process that I want you to follow when you tighten this up. And, and that's going to help later on when we assemble the rest of the panels that make sure everything fits nice and tight and it's trammed and square and true. So tighten these up first. Go ahead and install these, tighten these rods up, and it's going to pull it nice and tight this way. Install the screws into the back, but don't tighten them to the point that they're touching, just close. Once you're at that point, what I want you to do, and you may even want to ask a helper, make sure you're on a nice flat surface, and you're going to want to make sure both these components are, are touching flat so that it's a square tram along the bottom, and, and push into this so it's nice and tight. The square that you can get the base plate to the back plate, the rest of the panels and the alignment of all the rods is going to be much, much smoother and easier to tram later on. So let's go ahead and start that process. These screws, these screws, hold it tight, tighten them up, and we're all set with this. All right, there we go. I've got all these screws along the back tightened up and these tightened up. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the machine. It's going to be uh, strong in this axis now. Uh, it's still obviously a little flimsy because the side panels and the front rods aren't installed, but close enough. So what we need to do is start doing a tramming procedure. Uh, remember I was talking about the rod right in here. We had to align it to this bearing and this bearing and we preloaded it, shoved it up. But the problem is, is that the alignment of this rod and these rods uh, into the bottom as well as these bearing points coming up through here. Uh, basically we're all loose and there's a little play in those laser cut holes. So what we're going to do is loosen some of these uh, screws up, let them find their natural center and we're going to retighten it down and that's going to make this thing absolutely butter smooth. First thing we're going to do is an operation check that, that to see how much drag is actually on the system. Uh, some of these printers that I've built is actually extremely smooth right out of the, uh, the box. Some of them definitely have a little bit of drag uh, in the alignment process. So this is going to fix that. And you can actually repeat this process if you're not happy with the results. So the first thing you're going to do to go ahead and check is just reach your hand in here. And we have our, our collar right over here. Go ahead and give it a couple turns in the upward motion, meaning it's clockwise. Uh, in the upward motion, it's picking up the bed and that's going to give you the most resistance. So you can feel how much drag it's required. And then go ahead and turn it the opposite direction. 
and, and you're gonna feel how much uh, uh, drag or torque it takes to twist this collar. And just make a mental note of that because that's gonna be our frame of reference when we, uh, after we tram this to see if we have actually improved any of this binding up. Uh, it, like I said, it might not even bind, but uh, just do this process. Even if it feels smooth, you'll be surprised at how much smoother it actually gets. So there we go. I've got a, a good frame of reference of how, uh, how much torque it's taking to, to rotate this. And be aware that this lower collar uh, in this process is not tight to the motor itself. So the motor in the bottom should not be rotating. As we turn this, all we're rotating is that Z-axis lead screw. This bed, of course, is moving up and down as we're rotating that. And we're just feeling the drag that these bearings are uh, going onto the linear rods and the tension between it and the, uh, the Z-axis. So the tramming procedure, what we need to do is loosen up some of the screws. First screws that we need to loosen up are right here along this back. And that attaches this panel and the rods and these bearings, which lets the tension this way uh, become free. We're going to be tension, uh, loosening up these uh, side panels right over here, which allow these bearings to align to these shafts themselves as well as aligned to the, uh, the Z-axis. And then right in here onto the front side, we're gonna loosen these up and it allows the tension from this direction or this direction on the printer to basically find its neutral center. And then we're gonna re-tighten these up in an exact sequence that basically pulls everything into and lock into each other. And you're gonna notice that when we do this test again at the end, it should feel a lot smoother. Maybe not substantially, but it will definitely be a little bit smoother. Once we're done with that, we're gonna move on to the rest of the assembly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through this process. So when I talk about loosening these up, uh, we don't need to thread these all the way out. All we need to do is loosen up the screw enough that this has uh, free motion between the, uh, the two parts. You're gonna also notice like a pop sound as uh, the acrylic comes loose from the screw, right there. And, and basically just give it uh, you know, a half a turn on those and we're just loosening these up. And the, the natural tension of the rods is gonna find its natural center on those. So I'm just gonna go through this process on these screws and it's well documented in the manual exactly to what screws we're needing to do. Uh, and then there is gonna be a procedure that we're gonna follow uh, starting with 2.2.12, which is the exact uh, sequence we need to follow for the retightening of these. So now that all the screws are loose, if we take a look at this, we can see that there's a lot of flex and motion in here. And basically, if we would just give it a little bit of a wobble, now all the rods and the bearings are gonna find their natural center. So the tightening sequence, what we need to do is go ahead and tighten up these side plates first, followed by the top back plates. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in this procedure. Now that pulled tension on these rods outwards. Uh, now we're gonna tighten up these uh, screws right along the backside, which is gonna tram it this way. Followed up by these screws right here on the inside.
There we go. Now the final one, we need to do a little bit of what we did already before, which is preloading this Z-axis shaft. Since we loosened and tightened this one up, it allowed the shaft to align with the motor, this being able to slide back and forth slightly. So we need to get that preload back on there. So I'm going to make sure that these are good and uh, loose. And I can actually feel the play. You can hear it in this machine as I lift up on it. Right there, that's the preload we want to take out of that. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lift up, almost even holding up the machine, and just tightening up these back ones right here. And there we go. That is our first tramming procedure. Uh, all these rods are aligned to each other with the bearings uh, in this direction as well as in this direction. And we can verify that that uh, helped out by just going back to that initial test where we made a mental note of the amount of torque and the drag to go ahead and rotate this collar. And uh, yeah, definitely. I can now rotate this with just one finger. Uh, there's, there's very, very minimal drag onto the shaft itself. So that really helped out. That is super smooth. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So that brings us to step 2.2.13. That involves this little collar down here that we installed, but we raised it right up nice and tight up against this uh, lower mount. Now that everything has been trammed, what we need to do is loosen it up, slide it down, and uh, engage it into the motor. Now the distance between the top and the bottom isn't critical. All, all we really need to do is eyeball and split the difference between the top and the bottom. There's no need to measure this out. All we gotta do is loosen this up, slide it down, and tighten it back up, and tighten up the bottom, and then give it a twist and make sure it's engaged into the motor. All you're going to need is the 2.5 hex. I'm going to go right in here. I'm just going to go ahead and loosen that up, slide it down, and just eyeball that it's centered and give the top one a snug. Rotate it so I can get to the bottom collar. Give that a snug and just go ahead and grab the shaft and now when you rotate it you're going to feel a cogging and what that is is the uh, the magnets and the poles lining up in the motor and that that way you can tell that it's uh, positively engaged so there we go we're all finished up with that step let's go ahead and move on to the next step which involves the side panels